and you gain followers which upgrades your position like knave and squire and such and every time you play a level and do well it seems like you can pick up more followers if you have a Wi-Fi connection you can trade items over the net and you can compare rankings and such there is also multiplayer up to four people on the same Wii console and the controls are basically the same there's kind of a top-down view instead of the third-person view but other than that it's kind of like the single player and there are no less than 10 rule sets, although a couple are sort of duplicates. There are like two or three have you cooperatively fighting this particular enemy and, you know, it'll just be a different enemy for the duplicate ones. The tone is somewhat dark, but it also has elements of the sillier Sonic, like the show and maybe also the original games, like Sonic loves chili dogs in this too. And he's kind of one note. He has this talking sword called Caliburn, and the two spend a bit of the game just trying to outdo each other in who's more arrogant and mildly annoying, at least. There is kind of a nice thing about the talking sword. It's like the Wiimote, because when you swing the Wiimote, you swing the sword. So sometimes the Wiimote microphone will, you know, talk to you saying, you know, good job, or Sonic, watch out, and stuff like that. This also makes very nice use of the rumble feature. For being silly at times, the humor also genuinely has very funny moments. You know, two or three at least. The voice acting is fine. I didn't really find any bugs in this, although there are strange occurrences like you're able to the jars and such that sometimes hold rings merely by touching them. You don't even have to walk into them really much less run into them. Basically, if you sidestep and touch them, they break instantly. In addition to being a very powerful and sacred sword, Caliburn also has the power to speak independently of his mouth moving. I'm talking about in the... I'm talking about in the graphic novel storytelling sequences, where basically his mouth will go like this, just you know, as he's saying, don't be too arrogant, you haven't won yet. Basically. Several times the game allows you to choose what mission you're gonna play next, and you can always replay any that you've already played. I also kinda like the moral of the story, but again, that's kind of... It's not unusual for games to have morals, especially games that have something to do with role-playing games, at least. Overall, it's fun, but the gameplay is both awkward and really repetitive, and it really doesn't have anything to offer you other than just the experience of playing the game. It's not a compelling story, the characters aren't thoroughly developed and layered. The graphics are amazing, but if you're not into the gameplay, what does that really matter? In my opinion, that's always the case. No matter how good it looks, if the gameplay isn't fun or the story isn't engaging, what's the point? Very short, so probably want to stick with a rental. It's fun if you like Sonic and or fencing. At the same time, if you like either of those, maybe even both, then you're probably going to experience this as the half-baked serving of both that it is. I mean, my memories of playing the demo of the third of the original ones, when compared to the experience of playing this, it might be a little bit better, at least in some areas, but not by that much. And we're talking about two games that are at least over 10 years apart. I mean, if you want a good game that mimics your sword moves and such, Play Samurai Warriors Katana. Or Red Steel, I hear that's also really good. Haven't had a chance to play it yet. But I will, trust me, I will. That was my spoiler-free review. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.